Starship SN9 is grounded by the FAA. Another test tank gets tested. We'll debrief this week's Transporter 1 mission, discuss some Starlink updates and launches to come, and finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. This week, as we waited to see Starship fly, our emotions became as volatile as the stock market. But let's start with Tuesday's events. SpaceX was preparing their ninth Mars rocket prototype for a 12 and a half click flight, but because of high wind speeds, they pushed it to later in the week. Elon tweeting that they are hoping for FAA approval of a test flight Wednesday afternoon, which in retrospect kind of leads us to believe they never had it. Well, they didn't launch on Wednesday either, but they did create the world's largest fog machine, testing SN 7.2's 3mm thick 304L stainless steel under cryo pressure, which is 25% thinner than what they are currently using on Starship. Hey, you're not the only one with a New Year's resolution to lose weight. Soon after testing was finished, Elon wrote the slightly slimmer tank passed its initial pressure test. Perhaps next time, they'll stress it till they break it. you always be fat to me, Chris. Ah! The following day, that's Thursday or yesterday for those keeping track, SpaceX minions released the Kraken from its chains and permitted it to stretch its wings. Always a good idea before doing any physical activity. Then as the hours passed, the FAA removed their temporary flight restriction over the area. Elon followed up with a little insight into the government agency's broken system and their space division. Their rules are meant for a handful of expendable launches per year from a few government facilities. Under those rules, humanity will never get to Mars. Well, sure seems that way, because today SpaceX was moving forward with their intent to release the beast, but was soon again denied by the FAA. The government agency's posted operations plan advisory stated that the Starship rocket launch was canceled for today. Oh, come on! And the only vague explanation on the street is that the licensing issue has something to do with Starship SN9 itself. No sh**. But since today's cancellation, SpaceX posted on their website that they are now targeting Monday the 1st. Which is a good sign since prior to this they didn't have anything posted there. Elon wrote that major aesthetic improvements are coming to the Mars rocket, so bring on the tidal wave of speculation, boys. I think they'll be adding two Falcon Heavy side boosters, a unicorn horn, and a pair of steel balls, just to tell the man to suck it. In other news, SpaceX's big crane, nicknamed Bluto, has been moved to Pad A, awaiting the next victim's arrival, SN10. Today, the rocket left the high bay at the Starship Yard and made its way down Highway 4 to meet SN9, making it the first time two Starships have been seen at the launch site. Here's a quick glance at the updates to the rest of the Starship fleet from Brendan. The first Super Heavy booster under construction at the Spaceship Shipyard almost has its LOX tank fully stacked. One of the two SpaceX oil rigs we spoke about last week has been relocated. The future sea spaceport for Starship Super Heavy, called Phobos, was tugged across the Gulf to the Mississippi for severe gutting as the company refurbishes its purpose to that of a spaceport at sea. And although these won't be used to dig up fossil fuels, SpaceX does plan on drilling for natural gas near Boca Chica. That's right, they won't be using cow farts to fill Starship's methane tank after all, because apparently I'm ridiculous. But now the company is dealing with an equally suffocating stench coming directly from the bowels of society, attorneys and environmentalists. Relax, that's a joke. I love my lawyer wife, despite the hourly rate she charges me. And might I add, I'm the CEO of a litter bug extermination company. Anyway, the same SpaceX subsidiary that purchased the two oil platforms are in a legal dispute with another energy company over rights to land and wells. And on top of that, local wildlife advocates are hoping the FAA steps in because a lot of the land near the launch pad is public. Which could present another speed bump. Biden has already passed a record smashing number of executive orders since taking office, and one he has signed has paused energy drilling on public and federal lands for 60 days. And news sources are reporting that he's looking to expand the ban out to a year. Things you can't do by executive order unless you're a dictator. We're a democracy. We need consensus. Yeah, the lawyer wife is a real cutthroat in the energy sector, and over the last week she's really been cursing up a storm. Now let's move on and debrief Sunday's Transporter 1 mission. SpaceX packed their payload bay with a world record setting 143 satellites, including 10 Starlink sats with space lasers on board, and sent them on a trajectory to polar orbit. The booster was caught way downrange in the Bahamas by the autonomous drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, 
and she made her way back into port on Tuesday morning. Local photographer Greg Scott was there to be her paparazzi. But back to the launch itself, the fairings deployed and re-entered the atmosphere before deploying their shoots bra and were scooped up safely out of the drink by mystery and mischief. And of course, the world's most user-friendly vending machine deployed all 143 satellites without jamming. Not even a single shaking was required. These were the first Starlink sats to be deployed into a polar orbit. SpaceX wants to lower the altitude of some of their satellites to create better latency. But Jeff Hu and his company from the Amazon is running to the FCC, whining that SpaceX is trying to smother the competition in the cradle. Oh, the irony. Elon responded, it does not serve the public to hamstring Starlink today for an Amazon satellite system that is at best several years from operation. The Sirius XM satellite that went up on a Falcon 9 rocket on December 13th has suffered failures during in-orbit testing. While no specifics were given by the company during a securities filing, they did mention that the failure was not related to the SpaceX launch itself and that they are still able to communicate with and maintain control of the spacecraft. Why so serious? The manufacturer was Maxar Technologies, but don't bet against them. These days, you just never know when the self-deprecating portfolio pirates on Wall Street bets will pillage you. I'm pillaging everyone you included. The next Falcon 9 launch is Starlink 18, scheduled for Sunday, January 31st at 7.02 a.m. Eastern. And Axiom Space announced the first private ISS crew to ever be assembled in the history of mankind. They'll be spending eight days aboard the station after being delivered there by a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. Now, it was reported several months ago that Tom Cruise would be on this first mission to shoot his feature film, but I assume he got left behind due to limited space in the overhead compartment. Small body, big ego. We are creating thousands of jobs, you And now it's time for today's honorable mention. Ever since launching on top of an Atlas V rocket back in late July, the next rover to touch down on the surface of Mars has been traveling through interplanetary space for hundreds of millions of miles. And in just a few weeks, Perseverance's capsule will enter the Martian atmosphere, deploy a chute, fire its jetpack, yo-yo itself down to the surface, just like Curiosity did almost a decade earlier. But there are many things that set this machine apart from its car-sized predecessor. First, at 2,260 pounds, it weighs more. In fact, it will be the heaviest payload to ever land on Mars. It will also record video and audio of its descent and landing. The robot has cache containers on board so it can collect and leave behind samples of the red planet so a future return campaign can bring them back to Earth. It will also try to generate oxygen with its Moxie in situ experiment. Oh, and of course, it will give birth to the first Mars helicopter. And unlike Curiosity, Perseverance will land at Jezero Crater, which presents a bigger challenge with its cliffs and boulder hazards. This $2.7 billion investment on behalf of the American taxpayer will enter the Martian gauntlet autonomously on February 18th, Regardless of what happens, we'll feature it as our honorable mention the following day. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. And a very special thank you to my members and patrons for their monetary support. Without them, I would just quit this gig and go mooch off the wife. Is she just with you because you're rich? But she makes more money than I do. <laughs> have a nominal weekend. And until next time, Godspeed.